All right, so I've put the rear axle together. It's basically a carbon copy uh, of the front axle here, except we don't have the steering knuckles uh, or the steering assembly going through it. And the servo plate, yes, they've added a servo plate for those who want rear steer, um, uh, is a little longer and a different shape than the front servo, uh, the front servo plate. Anyway, uh, straight axle adapters on the back. Uh, is the last thing we have here and, and a hinge pin so when you crack it open all you have to do is lift it back. So on to step number 25 and we'll start doing some of the uh, actual links. Okay folks, you can see here that Axial has come up with a brilliant idea. I've been rock crawling for, you know, like more than a year. This is like my third season or something. Check this out. This is the chassis link. They're all aluminum. But dun, 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 they've put on plastic sliders so you can slide over rocks and protect your nice shiny links, help you glide over the rocks easier. So I've gone ahead and put two of these together. They are plastic if you're building along. Uh, check it out. The short ones will slide in to uh, this one slider that has the mounting holes on it, okay? Same with this long one. They now have plastic high clearance links uh, that come with this kit. So no longer do you have to worry about straight link, uh, links getting caught on the rocks. Uh, make sure, like I lay out all my stuff to make it easier when I'm building. It helps me, you know, figure out exactly what I'm going to use, how many of each do I have, you know, it just ensures that I, I know what I'm doing, kind of. Um, so for the same kind of thing here, I've laid everything out, two of the bent eyelets here uh, and two of the straight ones, they're going to be assembled with these links on either end. And I figured I'd show you how I actually do these. You can see that is a pretty small tight hole. And for this one, you want to make sure to take this. Instead of screwing the hex screws into the ends of these where it'll just get sucked in. Uh, basically, I'll put it into the end. I'll put it into the end of one of these, screw it in nice and tight, and then of course uh, just screw it in the end of that way. That way everything, you know, you're managing uh, the torque that's put onto the stuff and you won't lose the hex screw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling these and we'll get on to step 26 with the high clearance links. The longer hex screw goes on this end because it has to go through the plastic piece at the end. Okay, so now the lower links are fully assembled. You can see that they're all tight and into place. Everything's good to go. Time to start talking about the uh, high clearance links. Now, thank goodness Axial decided to put these in because I've used these on my AX10. It's another model of rock crawler that Axial did a few years ago. Uh, you can see here that these are lightweight super rigid, a great design for strength, okay? Uh, the only thing is is that they're plastic, great stock, but for something uh, like a build uh, like I always do, I wanted to make sure that to complement these great aluminum links that are going to be on the bottom, why not say to heck with the stock ones, and I actually went and picked up a couple of sets of Axial aluminum high clearance links. Now you guys can see here the model number on this is 3466. The 66 is actually the color code, okay? If you guys are going to pick up these, they're about $35 a pair depending on where you live. Uh, but I would say that this is a great complement uh, to the links that we have in place. So I've gone ahead and pre-assembled these. Uh, it's time to move on and start building some shocks. The Axial XR10 shocks, check it out. I've assembled three of these already just to save some time in the build. I will build one of you or one of these for you guys for those uh, watching uh, and building along. Uh, but great design, here we go. So if you're actually going to be building these, I've laid this out so you can see exactly the parts that you need uh, when you need them, generally speaking, okay? so. On the actual uh, piston itself, I have already put the um, rod end on as well as the rubber bushing. 
everything has been pre-greased. All of the rubber bushings have been pre-greased simply to, uh, to stop them from tearing anytime we're sliding these along. You don't want anything to rip. Uh, so, to keep this straightforward, we will be putting the, uh, see here, there is a rubber washer around the bottom cap, okay? Bottom cap, then a rubber washer. It's clear. I know you're having a hard time seeing that. There you go. Clear spacer, clear washer rubber, or clear rubber washer again, uh, and a little bit of a plastic flow meter, okay? There we go. Now, next comes the top part. This is the second flow meter. Okay, you'll see it's just a, uh, a two-hole plastic washer, basically, that sits on top, and another metal washer after that. Okay, and a small nut that's provided. And I'll tighten that up off camera. So you can see, for those who are a little confused, da -da -da, there is the actual internal workings of the shock, okay? Oh, getting a crowded table here. Okay, so for part 30 and 31, well, really all the way till 34, uh, it's about putting the links onto the axles to start forming the chassis. Okay, so number one, I'm going to start by cutting open the hardware from bag G and making sure all the screws and bolts are there. Then I'm going to move on to the front axle and start attaching the upper and lower links. Right, so these are all the pieces you need to actually assemble to the front, okay? So you obviously have uh, the screws that you're going to need and the nuts as well, so make sure to line them up. The middle one is actually a little bit longer with a different uh, nylon threaded nut there, okay? So you got to be careful because that's the one that's different. Anyway, if you line up and you watch which way your rod ends are facing, okay, you'll see that it actually will come together like this. Took me a second to figure it out, but I wanted to make sure I had it right, okay? So these are going to fit in the very top slot here. You can see earlier, if you were watching in the build, that there is this slot. So it's inside these that it's going to go. All right? <laughs> Watch the screw doesn't get stuck to the, the uh, magnet in the motor. And we'll just start to thread this through. Same with this, okay? There is a notch in the top axle where the nut is supposed to be seated. So that's a bonus. I, I, everything is really well thought out, it seems, so far in this build. Uh, and the design of the crawler, fantastic. So once everything's in place, you can move on and start to do the rear axle. Okay, all you hardcore rock crawlers out there are totally going to understand what I'm about to say. But I could install the shocks that we just worked so hard on uh, right on these first shock mount areas where they're supposed to go in the old ones. Or check this out. Those sliders that we installed are actual positioners. So you can put your shocks here, 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 or here. You can lift and raise the height of your uh, crawler now. Uh, super simple, so great job. So the sliders and the shock dampener positioners. Pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, two shocks that I have on the original arms just to see how the ride height is to begin with. So there we go. On to that step. All right, so the axles for the XR10 are actually done now. You can see here that the links front and back top and bottom as well as the suspension have now been installed on the axles. The Team Teakin motor is ready to go and it's time to start working on the chassis.